Welcome into Prep Zone Ramp Up, presented by Bevel State Community College. I'm Brett Elmore from WJLX 101.5 FM, alongside the sports editor here at the Daily Mountain Eagle, Jonathan Bentley. Jonathan, another week in the books, high school football. Yeah, I mean, we're getting close to the end of this thing now. We're getting close. We're getting into crunch time. Some teams are officially out of the uh, playoff race. Some teams have some work to do. It's getting interesting, getting down to yeah. the nitty-gritty. This is the best part. It's the this fun is, part. yeah. This is the fun part because it, uh, we kind of weed out the, you know, some teams are playing for pride, and now we get to some of these teams who they know what they've got to do in order to get either that region uh, a title or, or maybe even finish fourth place or are fighting for their lives. So Just it's really in interesting. You know, it really is. But let's get started with the game of the week. It was the Oakman Wildcats traveling to Carbon Hill to take on the Bulldogs and a pretty surprising game, 55-0. The final score, Oakman, just all over Carbon Hill. Yeah, the funny thing is, I said this would be a close game. I did too. And I, and, and I picked Carbon Hill. I, I said that there was going to be an upset somewhere. The way they played, played J.B. Pennington, I said, these guys are going to upset or beat someone that they're not supposed to. And I was afraid that Oakman might take this game a little lightly going over to Carbon Hill. But uh, what was I wrong? Yeah, they showed up. This is yeah. their best game of the year, hands down. 20-0 yeah. off the bat. The game was over. And Carbon Hill just, I mean, this is what Oakman can do. Right, and if you're Coach Hall, you have to really like this performance and really like where your team's at right now. Caden Marchbanks, 143 yards rushing, five touchdowns on the night. Bubba Odom, 160 yards passing and a couple of touchdowns. But if you're Coach Hall, you really like where your team is in this part of the season. Yeah, I mean, this is where you want to be playing your best. Right. And exactly. they are, and they only have a couple games left. And they take care of business here. They're going to be at home in the playoffs. And what about Carbon Hill? The, the Bulldogs, they, they played J.B. Pennington really tight last week. They had lost, what, uh, uh, two of the previous three games by a total of three points. Three points. Uh, and then they come out, and I, I don't know. Uh, they laid an egg. It's just one of those games. You know, I told my wife, she was like, hey, uh, we're thinking about going to this game. I said, this should be a good one. Yeah. You know, I think they left by halftime. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. did not turn out like I thought at all. They just had a bad game. It happens. The Jasper Vikings went on the road to Birmingham to take on previously 11th-ranked Jackson Olin. 52-31 the final score, but the Vikings played really well in this ball game. Uh, they played hard. They played tough. They fought for four quarters, had the lead, had them on the ropes uh, the entire first half of action, but uh, eventually the better team prevails, and, and you could see it in that game. Jackson Olin had so many athletes. Their, their offensive line averaged 303 pounds across the front. <laughs> Makes it tough, doesn't it? High school football. Right. And, Six A high school football. Right? And, and they had a, a, a defensive lineman who's a freshman who was in Tuscaloosa the week before and was in Tennessee on Saturday wow. as a freshman on recruiting trips. This kid is unbelievable. But the final score, 52-31, uh, Jasper drops it. But let's talk about Trayvon Stewart. This kid had a big night, 29 carries, 157 yards on the ground with a touchdown, 198 all-purpose yards. He caught two passes, wow. 41 yards and a score. Rosenfeld was good, connected on 15 of 31 for 170 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Kevon uh, caught eight passes for 95 yards and a touchdown. Malachi Gilmore recorded six tackles, two tackles for a loss and a sack. So the Vikings played well. Um, and and quite possibly played their best game of the year, even though they lost. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, Stewart, you mentioned he, he needed the ball more. Mm -hmm. And 29 carries is a takes me back to Caden Shelton type stuff. I mean, that when you have a guy that can do that, I mean, it just changes everything for them. And because it's been a lot of Rosenfeld so far this year. It, it has, and and the Vikings ran the ball a lot to the short side of the field and to the left, which that's where they controlled most of the night. But uh, nonetheless, the Vikings are eliminated now from the playoff picture, so they're playing for pride, and they're back at home coming up Friday night against Mortimer Jordan, a game you can hear live on WJLX 101.5. We'll have the game for you on radio. Final home game of the season, so fans wow. need, to, need to come out and support the Vikings. Your story starts at Bevel State Community College. Whether you are just starting out or starting over, 
Bevel State has an opportunity that is right for you. With five locations serving seven counties, you don't have to go far to start your own success story. Plus, with tuition lower than four-year colleges, you won't need to spend more for a great education. Visit us online at bscc.edu to learn about your options for seamless academic transfer and high-demand career tech and health science offerings. Let us help you tell your story. All right, where are we going to go next? Dora in Asheville, another shutout for that Dora D, 21 nothing. Yeah, I, that's one of the things I wrote down here. 1988 was the last time they had back-to-back -back shutouts. Wow. I mean, this defense this year, you know, it's no surprise that Chavis Williams gets there and the defense is just lights out. I was about to say, he likes defense a little bit. Uh, <laughs> second consecutive shutout, third overall of the season. Garrett Hoagland, 189 all-purpose yards, 128 yards passing with a touchdown. He rushed for 53 yards. But that defense is, some, is, is a unit that's playing really well, and especially for Dora, um, who controls its own destiny. I mean, uh, um, they've got uh, Good Hope left. They have Etowah left. Um, they win both of these, and they're home for the playoffs. Yeah, it's hard to believe. I mean, this, they were in the same spot last year yeah. and had to forfeit these games. That's right. why they're both on the road. They, I mean, they don't come home again. No. Hopefully, hopefully the playoffs. Yeah. But, I mean, this is a very tough – Good Hope's good. They beat Etowah last week. They're gonna, the defense is going to have to step up again. And this will probably be a low-scoring game, but, yeah. This, they got the, I mean, it's right in front of them. Good Hope is 6-2, and two, undefeated in the region. Dora, 5-2, and 3-1 and one in the region. That game at Good Hope in a game that we'll have on Country Legends 88.5 WJBE on Friday night. Um, Summit and Christian continues their winning ways. They are the pride of Walker County, are they not? <laughs> not crazy. Summit and Christian, 41, Appalachian, 21. And uh, Jordan Robertson, a couple of touchdown passes. Canada four, two receiving touchdowns. Jack Gable had a couple of touchdowns on the ground, but uh, who would have thunk this coming into the season? Summit and Christian six and one on the year. I did not see it. I mean, I thought they were going to be better. They've already matched last year's win total. Yeah, and and they're only going to continue. Uh, uh, they went out. They take second place in the region. Yeah, and I think they got a great chance to do that. Yeah, and if they lose now, they'll probably be on the road in the opening round. So it's very That'll important. That's what we're talking about at the beginning of the show. Very important these next few games for somebody Christian. Yes, exactly. I mean, I, I just love the way that it's the same suspects every week, and they just keep getting it done. It was a big game last week. Appalachian was a bad team, but they kind of jumped on them early. But then some of the Christian just took care of business like they needed to. Big rivalry game up in Winston County. Meek and Lynn meeting 46-15 the final score. Meek, the Tigers, take another victory as Cam Deaver, 10 carries, 127 yards, three scores. Ethan Grace, seven rushes, 119 yards, and a touchdown. Meek, another team that is the pride of Winston County. <laughs> no, How about that? They have a good chance to be the only playoff team in Winston County. Right. Has never happened. Right. I mean, uh, when you're looking at Lynn and Winston County and Addison and Meek, those other three besides Meek, uh, one's already eliminated, and the other two, they're going to have to, I'm talking about Addison and Winston County, they're going to have to win out and get help from other teams in order to make it. They're on the ropes. Yeah. yeah. That Winston County win over Addison was just, it was huge. Yeah, it was Changed huge. Changed everything. And, and that uh, could loom large yeah. for Addison because it, even if they were to win out and get a little help, you still have that head-to-head -head there, there with Winston County, yeah. which goes the Yellow Jackets Who way. Who would have ever thought that? But, yeah, Meek, it, Meek is really, really good this year. I've been surprised. I, I thought they would be better, but... I mean, they're playing for the region this week. If they win, yeah, reach the champs. Yeah, yeah, they are a lock for the playoffs, and uh, they're, they're playing for the championship. Speaking of Addison and Winston County, both of those teams, uh, they lose Friday night. Lamar County, uh, 23, Addison 14 in that mm. game. Yeah, I mean, Christian Roberts is back. He had a good game. It was just it's hard to win at those places. Yeah, you know? And Lamar is. County is pretty good. Yeah, they're really good. Uh, and then Winston County. Uh, they could not score against Sonogen, 35 yeah. to nothing. the final in that one. They've really struggled lately. It seemed yeah. like the highlight of their season was Addison, and since then it's been disappointing. They beat Curry, but that's, yeah. I think that's it. Curry, by the way, had to forfeit their game. Uh, 
to uh, Northside. And uh, at, at this point in time when we, when we uh, record this, we don't know what the status is for Friday night, but we're hoping they can play at least uh, again Friday. Yeah, I hate to see this. I mean, they, they missed four games last year. They got Haleyville this week. Yeah. They just, you know. They have Haleyville, they have out. Gordo uh, left on the <laughs> Gordo, schedule. Yeah. I think they have West Point, West Point. left on, on the schedule. Uh, just a bit of tough year for the Yellow Jackets. And finally, how about the Blue Devils? Wow. I, well, I can, <laughs> hey, they needed this. They needed That's they a needed. huge for these kids. I'm yeah. glad for them, really. It was homecoming at Cordova and a big victory over Carver of Birmingham. 22-20 was the final score. I ran into some kids uh, when I got off work. We have game day final Friday nights on WJLX till midnight. Uh, so uh, tune in if you need to hear the scores. But um, I got off and, and I, I went uh, to, to the gas station to get something to drink, and, they, and all these Cordova kids were in there after the uh, the homecoming, <laughs> and uh, boy, they were uh, they were ecstatic. But also, this and I, I pounded this every week on the radio. Six hundred program victories now for Cordova. They hit win number six hundred with nice. this one. So yeah, that's very few. It's a milestone in, in that group. Yeah, it's it's a milestone. So congratulations to Cordova. Uh, they're out of the playoff picture, but uh, Cody Hedrick, 134 all-purpose yards, three of nine passing, 71 yards at a touchdown, did throw two interceptions. He's had a little problem with that this year, but still rushed the ball 61 uh, yards on 14 carries with a touchdown in uh, the winning effort. So congratulations to the Blue Devils. They Definitely. needed this one. Well, what's funny is, that, I mean, they've been throwing the ball 40, 50 times. They went to the run this week, Yeah, and it worked. Yeah. Coach Smothers will have things turned around. Good we, for them. we have... Reclassification coming up in December, and a lot of people will be uh, uh, hoping that Santa brings them reclassification, one of them being Cordova, the other one being Jasper. <laughs> yes, those region schedules. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's got to be uh, two of the toughest regions in the state. It's know. awful. It, it really is. But uh, <laughs> anything else we want to add before we wrap things up? No. Nope. Good luck to our local teams again this week. Absolutely good luck, and especially to those teams that are still fighting for a spot in the playoffs. We'll be pulling for you on Friday night. For our producer, Jeffrey Winborn, for Jonathan Bentley, the sports editor here at the Daily Mountain Eagle, I'm Brad Elmore from WJLX. We appreciate Bevel State Community College for bringing you this program, as well as Kilgore Green Funeral Home, 1200 Birmingham Avenue, downtown Jasper. You can phone them at 384-9503. Until next week, so long.